a major ongoing problem with the implementation of Obamacare, one that no one's really talking enough about. That is actually outrageous and destructive and far-reaching in consequence. We saw that problem play out in real time in Pennsylvania State Senate today, where lawmakers left for the summer after a committee vote that killed a plan for participating in Obamacare's Medicaid expansion, a provision that would have extended health care coverage to 850,000 uninsured Pennsylvanians. They are not alone. Nearly 10 million uninsured Americans who could get coverage are trapped in states where Republican governors or legislators may refuse to expand Medicaid. I'm here with Ovik Roy from the Manhattan Institute, Joan Walsh from Salon, and Congressman Jerry Nadler. We're talking about the perverse politics of implementing Obamacare, and the place where I think this is the most perverse is on Medicaid expansion. And we've talked about this before. Ovik, you and I have, have, have talked about this. You know, it, it always seemed the political incentives would get Republican governors and Republican state legislators to go along with Medicaid expansion, partly because of the power of hospitals and doctors, frankly, in these states to lobby. We saw this in Florida with Rick Scott, where the head of, you know, he used to run a hospital chain, and, and when the, the folks from the hospital industry started testifying in the hearings, Rick Scott saw the light on this. Jan Brewer, same way in Arizona. Um, but a shocking number. I mean, really, truly, like if you had bet me on this, do we have the map with the different states? There you go. Um, you know, a shocking number of, of these states are refusing it. How do you understand the politics of this? I think they really are just determined to make this legislation fail. And they don't care. These are not the people they care about. Uh, and they don't believe that the government should be in the business of doing this. And so it's a totally ideological thing. And it, it's so many governors who were elected in that wave of 2010 as well. So it's a test of their Tea Party principles. And people are losing and they're winning. But Jan Brewer, I mean, Jan Brewer to me is the fascinating know. outlier here um, because not only did she go for it, she went to war for it. I right. mean, she like, I, we couldn't believe, she was like Attila maybe, the Hun. Maybe, maybe John she, Kasich has as well. And John Kasich has actually, and John Kasich, and part of the calculation of that horrible budget he signed and all the anti-abortion stuff in that budget, we all broadly understand as a way of kind of throwing the Tea Party base of, of Ohio State legislature a bone because he wants to get the so Medicaid may, expansion. Maybe unlike Governor Jindal and some of these other people, Governor Kasich and Governor Brewer have a conscience and don't care <laughs> and do care about thousands of people dying in their states unnecessarily. So here's the question. These folks, these 700,000 people, 800,000, 850,000 in Pennsylvania, which look like they're going to be left hand, what, what happens to them? Well, so a third, of, a third of them would be eligible for coverage under the exchange because right. the exchange drops from 138% of FBL federal poverty level to 100. So that's a big chunk. And then the other, uh, then, then, then you have to know in the individual state how many people are left in the gap between the pre-existing Medicaid program and right. So we've got just so people poverty. understand, we've got folks that are at the federal poverty line who qualify for Medicaid. The expansion was going to bring qualification for Medicaid up to 133%. Well, there's two points I want to make, though. That you know, I mean, it, it's it's not merely that Republicans want to kill poor people. That that they're opposed to the Medicaid expansion. It's also, in the case of Pennsylvania, for example, when the law is fully implemented, taxpayers in the state of Pennsylvania, aside from their federal tax dollars, will be spending $700 million a year on the Medicaid expansion because the match goes down to 90%. So there is, right. there is but, a but state they're probably taxpayer... Gonna spend, but they're going to spend... They would well, spend more than that $700 million on emergency care pro, otherwise. Uh, that's, that, that's debatable. But the other point I want to make is that the best evidence we have is that that to Medicaid does not actually protect people from death. With a study in Oregon showed that actually there was no improvement in health outcomes. It did protect people against financial, the, the, financial every, loss, every but study it did we've not... Seen, every study we've every. seen says that about 45,000 people a year Look, Can I just also say the thing about the Oregon, the Oregon study, which has been litigated a tremendous amount, and I don't want to litigate here. The one thing, the big takeaway, was that people were much happier and much less depressed. Because and they were you know, more financially secure. Right, and you know what I say? That's a huge <laughs> boon. If I can reach out to 800,000 of my fellow citizens in my state and make them them less depressed We're and happier and more financially secure, <laughs> then you know what? God love it. I want to do that. That's I, my I feeling about that. I support that, but there are so many more efficient ways to do that than the way the Medicare... Uh, I don't Medicaid know if that's program. true. I don't think Absolutely. we know. Well, that's, that's the true. question. And what we're seeing right now is the people, the, this sort of slice of, the, the, of, the, of our fellow citizens who are the people that were targeted by this law that was going to benefit probably by, them by the most, part of this law. by this part of this law, are just being, are possibly going to be locked outside of its and, benefits. And all the Republicans who are saying no are not giving us any alternatives to cover them. Other Roy from Manhattan Institute, Jim Walsh from Salon, and Congressman Jerry Nadler, thank you so much.